Hi, third graders, Ms. Fogelman here for your math lesson. Let me pull up our screen. Okay, so we today on September 10th are going to continue talking about multiplication and arrays. And our learning target today is that the student will use an array to complete a multiplication word problem. All right, but before we start that, I did want to review the next two math practices. Remember, we have these math practices so that we be can become better mathematicians. Um, today we're talking about number six and number seven. Number set six is to attend to precision. That means that I can work carefully and check my work. That means you're working carefully, neatly, and you're using um, math to check your answers. So if it's an addition problem, you can use subtraction to um, check your work. And we'll be learning more about that as the year goes on. Number seven is make use of structure. This means that I can use what I know to solve new problems. So whatever Ms. Fogelman or Ms. Dolby or Ms. Soto are teaching you, you can then apply that to your later learning when you are working on other math topics. All right, now this anchor chart is just a review of what an array is. An array shows a set is a set that shows equal groups in rows and columns. One thing I am noticing in your work that I've seen so far, some of you are forgetting that the groups need to be equal groups, okay? So if you have three in one row, you have to have three in all the rows. Um, it can't be three in one, four in another. They have to be equal rows. Um, they also have to be equal um, columns. So you're not only having um, the same amount in each group, but you're also having um, the same, um, the same columns. So please make sure that when you're drawing your arrays that you are um, making sure they're even and they all are equal groups. All right, so today's problem is there were two rows of tulips with six tulips in each row. How many tulips are there? So before we start, um, we, what are we trying to find out in this question? The first thing we need to find out is what is the question asking us? So first off, it's telling us that we have two rows of tulips with six tulips in each row. So the two rows are the number of groups. So we have two groups of tulips. tulips and within each group, we have six tulips. That's the number in each group. Now the question is asking us how many tulips are there? So we want to know within both, um, with both those groups together, how many tulips we have. So in order to do that, we are going to use the counters again. Let me scan down and get my counters. All right, counters are an easy way to make those equal groups and make sure our work is neat. Okay, so the question told us that we have two rows or groups of tulips. So here's one row. Here's two rows, and we have six tulips in each row. Now remember, you have to count these two. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the next group also has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have our two groups of six tulips. And you see with the counters, we can make our um, work nice and neat, which makes it easier when we're doing our work. Okay, so the next part of the question says, what would be our repeated addition problem? So let's go ahead and take a look at that next. Um, what would be our repeated addition problem? So what are we adding together when we're trying to find out how many tulips we have? 
So we know that this is one group. And this is, whoop, I don't want that. And this is the other group. So it is like saying six plus six. And that is our repeated addition problem. Okay. Now we also want to know how does six plus six then go into a multiplication problem? Well, how many groups do we have here? We have two groups, so our problem would have to start with the number of groups times the number in each group. Well, we know we have six in each group, so it would have to be two times six, okay, equals. Well, of course, both of these are gonna equal the same thing because we have the same um, drawing up here or array. So six plus six, if we don't know that, we can always count the circles, but we know that six plus six is 12, which means two groups of six, which is what we have here, or two times six is also 12. All right, so that is how we do our array. Please remember that your number of groups comes first in your multiplication problem, that's the rows then the number in each group, which is the columns. Okay, some of you are turning that around. We need to make sure we have number of groups times the number in each group. All right, let's see. All right, so before we finish, I do want to start showing you videos about multiplication facts. This first one is all about a number times one. I feel smart, uh -huh. I feel good, yeah. I feel smart, yeah. I feel good. I know my math, man, I know my facts. I know my math, man, I know my facts. I, my facts. I feel smart, I feel good, I feel smart, I feel good. I know my math, man, I know my facts. I know my math, man, I know my facts. Man, it's so easy to multiply, cause I can multiply, son, and I can divide. Like if there's five people, each has two eyes. How many eyes in all we multiply? Multiplying by zero is easy, man. Cause a number times zero is zero, man. Five times zero is zero. Eight times zero is zero. Ten times zero is zero. Think of it like this. If you had ten people and each person had zero cats, how many cats would you have in all? Hmm, ten times zero, zero cats. <laughs> I feel smart. Uh -huh. I feel good. Yeah. I feel smart. Yeah. I feel good. I know my math, man. I know my facts. I know my, facts. I know my math, man. I know my facts. I, know my facts. I feel smart. I feel, smart. I feel good. good. I feel Smart, smart, I feel good. Yeah. I know my math, man. I know my facts. I know my, facts. I know my math, man. I know my facts. Yo, check. When you multiply by one, you get the same number that you started from. So seven times one is seven. Eleven times one is eleven. Yo, tragic, do another one. Like if six kids each had one baseball, how many balls would they have in all? We can figure it out. It's so quick, cause six times one is always six. Oh. If you want to learn your facts, do what I did. Listen to a song and memorize it. Then open your eyelids, look at a number. Yeah, you can multiply and divide it. If you didn't hear it, just rewind it. This math here is fun. Oh, it's not a virus. I could teach a Tom's tables to a pirate. He says, Arr, I'm the multiplying pirate. I feel smart. Uh -huh. I feel good. Yeah. I feel smart. Yeah. I feel good. I know my math, man. I know my facts. I know my I know my math, man. I know my facts. I, know my facts. I feel smart. I feel good. I feel smart. smart. I feel good. I know my math, man. I know my facts. I know my math, man. I know my facts. Ha. Okay, so like they said in the video, um, anything times zero is zero. So no matter what the number is, if you're multiplying it times zero, it's zero. And anything times one is that number. So six times one is six. 
Seven times one is seven. A million times one is a million. Okay, so that's all I have for you today, my friends. Make sure you're getting your work done and have a great day.